waist tights. <laughs> and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sew together my double waist tied pinafore pattern. If this pattern is not out now, it should be available really soon. I will make sure that I drop it in the description below as soon as it's available. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I know I don't have many videos yet, but I do plan on posting more throughout the year. This pattern is really easy. It's great for beginner sewists as well as experienced sewists. I love wearing this pinafore because it's very comfortable. You can wear it with all kinds of stuff. You can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with dresses, you can wear it in the garden, you can wear it grocery shopping, you can wear it with nothing. You can wear it wherever you want because it's your choice. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to do a few different techniques. Um, You'll need a few things to get started on this pattern. Of course, you'll need the pattern. You'll need some kind of cutting device like rotary cutters, scissors, whatever you want to use to cut it out as well as um, fabric. I usually recommend like sheets, linen, cotton, something without stretch. You could use stretch, but I don't think it'll look as good. Besides that, I think that's everything that we need to get started. So let's go. Okay, so here is the pattern. Okay, so here is the pattern, and these pages are made to overlap. Once they're overlapped, you will tape them together, and I'm going to do this real quick, and I will be, once your pattern is taped together, you will want to cut out all of the pattern pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Next, we're gonna cut out the bodice pieces. There are two versions of the bodice. This is a crossover bodice, and this is the basic bodice. I will go ahead and use the basic bodice for the back and the crossover bodice for the front. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to make both the crossover bodice as well as the basic bodice. The basic bodice is going to be the front and the back if you're doing the basic bodice for both versions, or it will just be the back and then you'll use the crossover pieces for the front. You'll want to make sure that you cut out double. Um, so if you're going to use the same fabric for the lining, that's what I usually do, make sure you cut out double. So you'll have two front pieces, two back pieces, or four front crossover pieces as well as two back pieces. I know it sounds complicated, but once we sew everything together, it's really not too bad at all. So this fabric is 42 inches wide. I usually recommend like a 50 to 60 inch wide fabric if you can find it. I use the entire width of fabric to get more fullness in the skirt. So if you want a very full skirt on your apron, then you're gonna wanna use a wider fabric or do a few panels. I'm just gonna use the width of fabric on these um, because I plan to sell them. So I will be cutting two skirt pieces, one for the front, one for the back. There will be a cut chart on the instructions that will show you what length you should cut them to. So just completely up to you. Once you have your bodice pieces, your pocket pieces, your waist ties, as well as your skirt pieces, then we'll be ready to sew. Okay. Okay, so for this crossover bodice, you will need two front pieces for the left side, two front pieces for the right side, as well as two of the basic bodice pieces for the back. And then you will also need four bodice pieces if you're gonna be doing the basic bodice for both the front and the back. I ran out of fabric, so I'm gonna to have to piece together or use a different fabric for the lining of one of these. Since I'm doing two versions, I underestimated how much fabric I would need. So um, once you get all of that cut out, make sure you have your straps. So you're gonna need four straps for each of these. Um, for very narrow fabric. I cut mine out the whole width of fabric, folded it this way. And so you'll need four per apron and two pockets as well as two skirt pieces. For our basic bodice, you're going to want to take two of the basic bodice pieces, put them right sides together and attach at the shoulder seam. You'll do this for both the lining and the main fabric. You'll stitch right here and then we will open that up. Once you've sewn the shoulder seams together, my preference is to top stitch 
right here on the sides of both shoulder seams. You do not have to do that, it's just personal preference. Once you have your main fabric sewn together, you'll want to repeat this process with your lining fabric. Now I had to stitch this together. I was missing just a tiny bit of fabric right here in the center, but it doesn't matter because it's the lining. So I will do that and I'll be right Next, we're going to actually be doing our burrito roll, which I've talked about a little bit previously. The burrito roll is how you encase the shoulder seams. So I will be showing you how to do that slowly. That way you have this so I will be showing you how to do this a burrito roll so you can finish off your shoulder seams without having to use a bias tape or some other method. To do the burrito method, you're going to want to put the lining and the main fabric right sides together. Then you will pin or clip all the way around the neckline, matching up the shoulder seams. So I will do that. Then we will sew all the way around using our half inch seam allowance then clip all the way around the neckline and then we can start working on our burrito roll. I recommend pinning the four quarters, but you can pin however you'd like. Uh, I sometimes don't pin at all, but that's just being a little bit reckless. So I don't recommend that if you are a new sewist. Now I'm gonna sew a half inch all the way around in a big circle and then come back and clip and I will show you in just one moment. All right, so now that we have the neckline all sewn together, I have went ahead and clipped all the way around. Okay, so now that we've gotten the neckline done, you will turn this right sides out. So you just take your lining, shove it through the neck hole, and then we will meet everything back up on the other side. Once you have everything met back up, it should look like this. And what I would recommend doing here is under stitching. Now this is my main fabric now. The lining is the one with the slit on that bodice piece. So what you're gonna do is open up your main fabric and take this seam allowance and stitch it down all the way around the inside of the neckline. Your stitching will show on the lining of the fabric but won't show on the main. And this just keeps your neckline from puckering and looking bulky. So what I'm going to do is understitch real quick and you want to do it as close to your seam as possible. Usually about an eighth of an inch um, will do just fine. And so that all the way around the inside of this neckline and then we will um, give it a nice press. Okay, so we are going to do our understitching. That's done by opening up the main fabric, pushing the seam allowance toward the lining and sewing on top of that seam allowance as close to your main stitching as possible. I use this little piece on my foot um, as a guide, but you can use whatever you would like. I like to do this stitch a little bit longer, maybe a three or three and a half stitch length instead of a 2.5, which I normally use for construction. And as you're sewing this, you wanna make sure that you pull everything tight. And that way, none of your lining is showing through the front side of your fabric. Now, I actually trimmed this a little too short, um, which does happen, so if you are going to treat the if you are going to trim your seam allowance, um, just make sure that you don't trim it too short. I got a little bit carried away, but you know, such is life. Once you are done understitching, this is what your understitch should look like. And the inside of your fabric should be all sewn down so that seam allowance is not just flopping around in there. And now we are gonna go press. Also, this is not sponsored, but I got a, a new iron this year for Christmas and it has been the best. Like, look at the steam. <laughs> um, I had a $10 Black & Decker iron that I used for years, the entire time I've been sewing. And I didn't realize how big of a difference it makes to have a nice iron. Um, I think this one was about $100, but it was definitely worth it. In my opinion, I would buy another one in a heartbeat if I had to, but who needs two irons? Like, not me. Anyway, so once you get your neckline all pressed nice and neat, we will do the burrito roll. As you can see, the understitching looks like that. And here is what the neckline looks like. So it's nice and crisp and just looks pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna finish the sleeves. 
Now we're going to enclose these sleeve seams or sleeveless, I guess, seams <laughs> using the burrito method. You may already know how to do this method, but I know there are a lot of sewists who do not. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. So to do, so to do the burrito method, you're going to wanna open up this shoulder seam. This is the main fabric, this is the lining. You're going to scoop all of this fabric on the other shoulder into this shoulder. So you take this fabric, pull it in into the center of your main fabric and your lining. Okay, so you're going to open up your main fabric. This is your lining. You wanna take all of this fabric from the opposite shoulder and encase it between these two pieces when we put them right sides together. So we're going to scoop up all of this fabric from the opposite shoulder seam. It looks like a diaper right now. This is what diapers look like when I used to make them. Um, and then we're going to pin this shoulder seam together, being sure to keep that opposite shoulder seam encased in this shoulder seam. And you will sew all the way along here. And then we will pull it out through the bottom. Okay, so one more time, opening up the shoulder seam, scooping up all of the fabric from the opposite shoulder, being sure to keep all of the fabric out of the way, pinning this right sides together, this one shoulder seam, keeping the other shoulder seam out of the way, matching it at the shoulder, all the way down here to the armpit and sewing all the way down. I like to clip about every, I don't know, two inches or so just all the way around, and this helps give the seam a little bit of flexibility. All right, so here we are at, all right, so here we are at the shoulder seam. We are going to open up the end of the bodice, and this is our opposite shoulder seam that has not been sewn yet. You want to pull on that fabric Keep pulling, keep pulling, even though this seems really weird. <laughs> and you just pulled out your, oh, that's what she said. <laughs> you <laughs> have pulled out your finished shoulder seam. You've already done this side, now we just need to do this side. You repeat the process exactly the same as before. You open up the main fabric in the lining, my lining is this piece right here. This is my main fabric. You wanna open up that shoulder seam. You can flip it over. Looks like a big old diaper. Pull the finished shoulder seam, all that fabric into one long hot dog right here. And then we make our burrito by encasing it in the diaper. <laughs> Burritos and diapers. Man, I'm getting really weird today. And now uh, we will <laughs> sew all the way down this armhole. So I'm gonna repeat that process real quick for you. All right, friends, I got this seam sewn and I did clip all the way around about every two inches. Now we're going to pull from the inside of the bodice again, pull that opposite shoulder seam all the way through and there we are, we've got two finished shoulder seams. With a nice clean finish, now my recommendation at this point is to go get your iron and to press everything nice and neat. Move on to ironing the base ties. Once you are done ironing your bodice, you will want to iron your waist ties. Um, you can do this several different ways. I do it by folding it in half, then folding it in half again, and then um, pressing all of that and stitching it down. If you have another preferred method on how you finish um, ties, that's completely up to you. I've also done it on my serger, but I just like the way that this looks better. Uh, I don't know why, but it takes a little bit more time and it is a lot more ironing. It just looks prettier. And if I'm gonna spend the time to do it, I might as well make it look 
cute, you know? Um, so once you have your bodice all done, we will move on to the waist size. Now I'm gonna quickly sew together the crossover front and that way I can show you all what that will look like. First, I wanna put them right sides together and we won't cross them over just yet. You'll have to make sure that you press these open. I haven't done that quite yet. So press the shoulder seams open. Once you have that pressed open, then you will pin all the way around this neckline, all the way down, and then we'll repeat that burrito method on the shoulder seam. Just like we did with the other bodice, you're gonna to wanna to clip all the way around the curved part of the neckline. You don't have to clip around the front unless you just feel like it, but you know, you do you. Whatever works. I just work here. I don't know if other people say that or if that's just like a my family thing, but do other people say that? Like, I just work here because we say it all the time. Anyway, so now we are going to want to do the same thing. Open this up. And this is the same on both sides. So I can use either piece of fabric for the front, you know, the main or the lining. It doesn't really matter. Just whatever side you understitch will be your lining. So again, you want to repeat that understitching method by pulling up your main fabric and your lining, pushing this toward the back and stitching all the way down and around the neckline. Because thirds time, blah, 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 thirds times, <laughs> I cannot speak because third time's a charm. We're gonna go ahead and do one more burrito roll just because. So you want to open up this side seam, scoop the other side seam in, wedge it in the center of this fabric diaper and match these two sides, the lining and the main fabric, right sides together, pin and sew all the way along the length of the fabric. One thing to know when you are sewing your burrito roll is to ensure that you keep all of this fabric on the inside away from your needle. So when you start the seam, just make sure you're keeping your seam allowance. Once you get up to the actual shoulder, the bulk of the fabric is gonna start right about here. So what I like to do is use my fingers, make sure that nothing is in the way, and continue sewing. I promise once you do this just a few times, it will click and it will be the best thing for you. All right, time to give birth to a fabric burrito. Pull it, pull her out, and there we go. You can actually do this when you have a split neckline, a different method but I'm just sticking with the burrito method because it's what I'm used to and what I find fastest. Um, you can go ahead and sew this up while you're sewing the neckline, um, but I just like the way this looks. Now for the closed neckline, I'm not sure of another way to finish the neckline, so if you know of another way to finish a closed neckline for something like this, you let me know. I haven't quite figured that one out, but you know, we learn something new every day and obviously I am not a sewing genius, so I've just kind of learned on the fly. All right, let's repeat with the other side. Okay, so now that we have the crossbody, bodice, cross, bo cross, <sighs> cross over bodice, I cannot speak today. It's fine. Okay, so we have two bodices done. You're going to want to press this bodice, which I have not done. If you haven't already, press your stuff, okay? Don't skip out when you're sewing with woven. Pressing makes the biggest difference. Okay, so I have gotten my cross over, cross over bodice done. Okay, then, you're going to want to overlap four inches. And we will sew this together right here at the bottom. 
so overlap four inches so right here and you may want to tack this closed it's all going to be personal preference if you want the crossover to be a little bit further you can also do that as well you may just have a little bit of gaping because the neckline is designed to be the same as the back so four inches to cross over in the front okay so now we are getting to the part of uh, ironing everything you'll have to iron the pockets you'll have to iron the hemline you'll have to iron all of the things but if there's one thing I learned from Sandy, a woman who fostered me in high school, is that you should iron everything. She ironed her track suits. She ironed her underwear. She ironed everything. So if you're watching this, you taught me how to iron. Okay, so what you're going to want to do with your straps, I'm just going to show one to save you all time because you don't need to watch me ironing everything. You want to fold it in half all the way down the length. Fold it in half and iron. Oh my goodness, is it getting steamy in here? Or is it just me? Look at that. Okay, so I've ironed it all the way in half. You want to open it back up. Can you zoom in just a little bit for you? Okay, open it back up and you have this memory seam in the middle. Fold your strap one half in so it'll be a quarter of what the strap actually is in width. So fold that in, iron all the way down. We're basically making a giant bias tape that you won't use as bias tape. This is going to be your waist straps. Now if you prefer your straps to be longer, you can cut them longer. This is just the length that I found that looks good and fits the library sizes, um, but really it's personal preference. I really need to get a different ironing table because whew, this is, this is steamy. Okay, repeat with the other side. End up with one big giant piece that's gonna look like bias tape. And we are going to take that piece and fold it in half but first, you want to open up the end, fold the bottom in once, fold the sides in like so, and then we'll fold that in. It's gonna look a lot neater <laughs> when I'm on the table, and then iron it. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Press, fold your memory seams back in toward the center, right? Press right at the end and then look like this and we are going to iron all the way down and then you are going to sew across here and all the way down your strap the pockets you want to fold in a quarter of an inch then a half an inch on both sides I like to make sure that they're roughly the same size when I do my pockets they don't have to be exactly symmetrical and then you'll want to open up the ends and do the same thing quarter of an inch half inch then we will fold the sides back over like so. Um, once you get the top and the bottom done, I do recommend going ahead and stitching over top the front or over, t my goodness, I cannot talk today. I recommend stitching, sewing the top first, then folding in, and then we will um, sew all the way around once, and then you will attach it and sew a second seam around whenever you attach the pocket. If you're ironing, you wanna repeat these steps on your skirt pieces. You only have to do it on the sides and then the bottom. So fold the sides in a quarter of an inch, then fold it in a half an inch. So a quarter of an inch, half an inch, iron, and then you want to fold up the bottom quarter of an inch half an inch iron then you will sew the bottom first then fold the sides back over and finish those seams and then once you're done we will attach everything to the bodice we're just going to pretend that i have already sewn the waist ties together so i can show you how to attach the waist ties so you're going to want to take your bodice main fabric up go to one of the shoulder seams stick your waist tie directly to the top of that seam like this fold it over and then you will sew right here 
and encase that in between the main fabric and the lining. And once it's sewn, I'm just gonna pinch you to show you what it'll look like. Your waist tie will look like this, and it'll be nice and neat and right in the top corner of that seam. So whenever you tie it really tight, it pulls this part of the bodice around your body. Now, I recommend sewing over this several times because there's gonna be a lot of tension on those ties. So go back and forth here several times, and um, once you're done, make sure you repeat on all four of your bodice corners. <laughs> All four of the use side. Here we are, I have stitched all the way down, went over this several times and clipped that corner. Then you're gonna turn it right sides out, pull on your tie and it should be nice and tight right up into that corner. And it just makes a nicer clean finish. In my opinion, the first version of this that I made, I put the tie down here and it just made this part floppy. So this helps pull it tight around your body and just gives it a cleaner look. Here is what your apron should look like. This is the bodice completed. Next, we're gonna move on to the skirt. You can go ahead and give this a nice press again if you would like. I usually do that once everything is done. You can also try it on and make sure it fits you where you want on your body. So I have overalls on now, but I will show you uh, roughly. Okay, so everybody's uh, torso length is going to be different. I'm gonna apologize for the weird hat hair I probably have right now. So you can try on your bodice, get it tied, now, one way to tie it is to tie it underneath your bust and then wrap around and tie it on your back, or you can just tie it on the sides. And you can see where it hits you. Mine hits me right around my natural waist, but if you want it to be longer, then you can go ahead and cut out again and make it longer. Um, this is just the best uh, length that I found to fit different body types. Um, so again, I recommend making a muslin. Try not to use your expensive fabric when you are first cutting out just to make sure that you like the fit of it. Um, once you add the skirt, it is gonna hang a little bit differently. If you wanna tie it on the sides, you can just tie it in a bow right here and kind of get an idea of how that's gonna fit you. It's a pretty generous fit and so um, I think my bust is about 30, 31 inches, and it should fit um, a wide variety of sizes because the ties are long. Um, so there is the bodice. And now we're gonna move on to the skirt. We're gonna attach the pockets. Once you have everything hemmed, uh, come back, attach, I'll show you how to. Uh, once you have everything hemmed, your pockets and your skirt, we are going to attach the pockets before you gather. Do not gather before you put the pockets on or you'll pop your pockets will up in a weird spot and they'll look wonky. So don't do that, okay? Okay, so on your skirt pieces, you are going to want to fold in a quarter of an inch, then um, anywhere between a half inch to five eighths, it's completely up to you. I kind of like a wider hem on my skirts all the way around. The bottom I do about an inch hem. Um, so all personal preference. So fold over twice. You can actually serge and just fold it over if you'd like to do that. But I just went ahead and folded it two times, ironed it, and then you will sew along the bottom first and then your other two sides. Make sure that you don't hem the top because that's where we're going to be gathering all the fabric. And we will come back and attach the pockets in just a moment once you have all of this hem. This in half and then you will fold it in half again and mark the quarter points. And this is where you're going to want to put your pockets. Otherwise, your pockets will end up too close to the middle or too far to the side. So again, I'm gonna take where my hem's supposed to be, fold it over and mark that quarter point with a pin. Then lay this flat, take your pockets, and make sure that you have two of the same size pockets. I did four at the same time since I'm making two aprons. Now I know it's a little bit difficult to see because this fabric is the same. I recommend pinning it about four inches down from the top of your
So I have marked the center point on the front of my bodice with the main fabric up, and I've marked the center point of my skirt with the pocket piece. I'm gonna match those two and then adjust my gathers to fit all the way across the front of the bodice, and then you will pin everything once you have your gathers all evenly arranged. So using a half inch seam allowance, if you have a serger, you can serge it. Um, you can also use bias tape to enclose that. I'm gonna sew first, then serge off the edge, and then I usually attach bias tape just for a cleaner look, but you don't have to do that. You can even leave it raw, but I would zigzag around the edge of the fabric just so it does not unravel. If you want, you can fold the seam up and then top stitch on top of that seam so it doesn't stick out. You can do that even if you don't have a serger, or you can add bias tape by attaching it to the underside, folding it over, and then top stitching it down, which is what I usually do to finish this off. And then just repeat on, repeat attaching the skirt to the back side of the bodice, and you'll be done. that you had so much fun, no pun intended, <laughs> um, and that you really enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time.